Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Film Fights. This is going to be a weird episode, that's for sure. Today I will compare two popular films that at first glance seem totally different, but after taking a look, huh, huh, it becomes increasingly clear that they're extremely similar. Of course, because you've read the title, these two films are The Matrix and The Lego Movie. Yeah, it's a strange comparison. One is a gritty 90s classic that left an unshakable impact on cinema and pop culture alike, and red-pilled us all. Its art style, cinematography, and set pieces made it the most influential film for the entire action genre at the start of the new millennium. The other is... The Lego Movie. Tonight on Where Are My Pants... Honey, where are my pants? <laughs> in film and art in general, it's not rare to see one work pay homage to or be a play on another previous work. A good example could be how The Magnificent Seven is like the even older Seven Samurai, but with cowboys and Mexicans. And there's also Superman and Spider-Man. My claim is that there is the same relationship between The Matrix and The Lego Movie. Whether intentional or not, well, probably intentional, there are so many similarities between the two. Once I've gone over them, I'll give my thoughts on which one is better in traditional film fights fashion. So, which Matrix is better, the original or the Lego movie? Let's take a look. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Whew, here we go. Both the Lego movie and the Matrix tell the story of a pretty average loner dude going about his life in his normal world, which he believes to be real. On what appears to be your average everyday, a highly skilled emo girl with a higher understanding comes and pretty much turns everything the protagonist thought they knew upside down. Although her ways are strange at first, she serves as the love interest, with her and the protagonist falling in love by the end. However, she's just one of many in a resistance movement against the evil rulers of the world. Those in this resistance perform incredible feats that bend what is thought to be possible due to their wisdom on the true nature of their reality. The emo chick brings the main character to the leader who red pills them, granting them knowledge that is beyond the limitations of the old world, revealing how their reality is actually made up, and telling them that there's some special chosen one who will save the world. They then proceed to train in the blank, malleable void of the main character's mind, as the leader explains the nature of their world. Of course, Emmett is Neo, Wild Styles the new Trinity, Vitruvius is Morpheus, and Good Cop Bad Cop is Agent Smith. Hmm, then who does that make Batman? Does anybody in the Matrix constantly brag about how awesome, dark, and cool they are? DARKNESS! No. The Lego world is the Matrix, and the real world is the real world. For those who haven't seen it or are a little rusty, the Matrix is basically a giant VR game except there are no squads of knuckles running around clucking. Most of the human population is plugged in and fooled into believing it to be the real world by their robot overlords who have taken over the Earth. Keeping the humans plugged in allows them to stay powered by human bioelectricity. Attention everyone! Run for your lives! Robots have taken over the world! The Legos in the Lego movie are just that, Legos. They're toys being played with by Will Ferrell's son. Heck, even the evil robots our heroes have to fight in the end look the same. The micromanagers and sentinels. The resemblance is uncanny. The Matrix is chock full of messages, references, and mind-boggling moments. Somebody should keep track of how many times Morpheus blows your mind. How many minds blown per hour does he go? You think that's air you're breathing now? But instead of going scene by scene to point out everything the writers are getting at, I'll just give some basic summaries just so we're not here for five hours. One of the major themes in The Matrix is knowledge and ignorance. Knowledge works in two ways here, as a liberator and a curse. Perhaps these can be symbolized as the blue and red pills. The blue pill showing knowledge as a curse. You don't want to know the truth about your reality because it's too much to handle, it's too depressing. You'd rather just stay ignorant and enjoy your false life in the Matrix. This is what the character Cypher wants. 
He wishes he took the blue pill instead because his life in the real world on the rebel ship the Nebuchadnezzar is too painful and monotonous. In the second act, he even works at a deal with Agent Smith to hand over Morpheus for a life back in the Matrix in return. So Cypher makes us ask, is it better to be free but deal with the burden that comes with the truth, or to remain ignorant and enjoy your ignorant life? This ties into another theme, which is reality. What is even reality at this point? Is it the Matrix? That's what's real for billions of people. That's where almost everyone has invested their time and energy. So what makes it any less real than the last human settlement Zion? Reality seems to be whatever people want it to be. Something that can be manipulated by the agents and rebels. And there's nothing more engaging than when the audience sees that everything they know is completely fake. Not only is Neo's world being turned on his head, but the audience is too making our jaws drop as we watch it. The Matrix intentionally pushes the viewer to question their own reality because we can always just take things at face value and move on with our lives, or we can try to look under the surface because there's always more than what appears. It's kind of funny how two movies with literally the same story, plot, and characters can be interpreted totally differently. When I think about the Lego movie, themes of ignorance versus knowledge or questioning reality doesn't come to mind. Really, what I see the most of is creativity, something that ties in really well with the property. Whenever you're playing with Legos, you always encounter the question, do I make what's on the box or build something new? The Lego movie definitely embraces this conflict and makes it central to the film. Will Ferrell, represented by Lord Business, wants everything to be perfectly as planned, while Emmett wants the people to think and create for themselves. This segues into the other theme, which is authoritarianism. Yes, the Lego movie is about an authoritarian society. This popular, single-party government has an ideal of how everyone should be and strictly enforces everyone to behave a certain way, being stuck in place as opposed to being free and doing whatever they'd like. So I love how the Lego movie uses the model given from the Matrix and uses it as a launching point to give unique messages that really only a Lego movie can tell. This is why I'm not really upset that it's a remake or rehash of The Matrix, because it uses The Matrix to tell its own story, and to do its own thing. The important part of the film fight, however, is in the differences. Yes, there is so much in common, even when it comes to the little details, but it would be silly to call the Lego movie a literal remake. Obviously is the tone. Maybe you've seen videos that change up the editing or music of a film and mold it into something entirely different than the original. This is kind of the same thing. The Matrix is the father of the gritty action movie movement that plagued the early 2000s. The color palette ranges from black to dark gray. I only work in black, and sometimes very, very dark gray. Everything comes across as super serious and intense, even when something silly is happening. It's treated as the coolest thing ever. The Lego movie, on the other hand, is a full-on comedic ride. Every second is another joke. The humor comes in such rapid fire that if you even blink, you might miss one of them. And the color scheme too is so bright, it's almost seizure-inducing. However, I would be lying if I didn't say I was dying of laughter the whole time. Also, The Matrix and the Lego movie have the whole destiny thing reversed. In the former, Neo believes for the majority of the story that he isn't actually the prophesized The One who will bring the fight against the robots. That is, until the very end when he comes back and defeats Agent Smith with the knowledge that he truly is The One. But in the Lego movie, Emmett starts off believing that he is the special and continually works to achieve his status despite what others think, only to discover in the end that the whole thing was made up just a tool to inspire someone to defeat Lord Business. Oh yeah, and no Batman in the Matrix. That's exactly what it lacks the most. First try. Both the Matrix and the Lego Movie are excellently crafted films that stand out above many others in their genre. They're beloved by many and served as an inspiration for countless others, whether good or bad. The entire film industry would never be the same. After 1999, you've got a string of black and gritty action films that overuse slow-mo. And after 2014 and to this day, 
young audiences are berated by films based off of toys and other properties for kids. So while both movies are great, their impact on the film industry itself are questionable at best. But objectively speaking, which one is the better movie? The Matrix or the other Matrix, the Lego movie? And the better Matrix is... Gosh, I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this. The Lego movie! Yay! This may be a huge upset, but I honestly enjoyed the Lego movie even more than The Matrix. If we're being honest with ourselves, not everything aged well from it. With a ton of cheesy, pure 90s action and music, it's nearly impossible not to laugh at the ridiculousness taken so seriously. And I think the Lego movie actually handled the Chosen One story better. I've never been a fan of these, throwback to the Mulan vs Moana video, but the Lego movie took a dumb premise, flipped it on its head, and made it a thousand times more enjoyable, as opposed to The Matrix, which just took the boring Chosen One stuff and took it straight up. To sum it up, The Matrix made a super fancy wheel, with epic themes and concepts, but the Lego movie reinvented it by twisting every trope to make an epic comedic adventure. And it lacks 90s. Ugh. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to please leave a like and subscribe. I know at the end of each video, I always say, see you next week, but there actually won't be any videos for the next two weeks, because this is the end of Tim Rex Season 2. But don't worry guys, I'll be back in mid-June to do the one year anniversary Tim Rex special. To celebrate, I'll be remastering my oldest videos, starting with Dawn of Justice v Civil War. So for these two weeks, feel free to go back and watch my previous videos. See ya then!